Well, I'm so thrilled to bring yet another innovative grant winner. Um, I've got Kira Lidner, and she is joining us from South Granville. Hi, Kira. Hello. Um, so we're really excited today. I mean, their FAFSA completion results, they ended out the August year of 60.2%. That was an 8% increase. And we are just really thrilled and excited that Kira is here with us today um, to share not only some of her lessons learned, but some of those real tools and tips that so many of you have been clamoring for. So um, she'll talk a little bit about some of the outreach that they've done, really the community partnerships and demystifying the process, but really the importance of that flexibility and some of those tools, again, that I mentioned that really helped her to kind of launch in and make sure that she was reaching out to our students and our families in a really meaningful way. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to you. Um, so one of the main things that was actually really helpful was something that is a little bit more college advising course specific, but I think could definitely be adapted for a different program. Um, so we had regular automated messages go out that essentially just checked in with families on FAFSA progress, you know, the residency form applications, things like that. But they were especially helpful for the FAFSA just to get a kind of a pulse check on the families who were a little bit more engaged from the texting side of things, especially since in 2020, you know, everybody was working such crazy long hours, things were just chaotic. So just having a quick way to be like, hey, yes or no, are you doing well? Or do you need a little bit of help? Um, and then again, being sure to cover both Spanish and English language uh, messages. Um, this year, actually, one of the interesting things that's been happening is I've been getting responses in Spanish, which I do not speak, but I have been using a combination of Google Translate and then some of those websites that do sort of word for word translations, trying to sort of cobble together a coherent response. Um, but it's definitely been very helpful. A, a, good, a good chunk of my parent interactions last year were either solely through um, just Grace SMS, texting, emailing of some kind, um, or like occasionally I've met some of them at the end of the year, but some of the parents I spoke with most, I actually never spoke with face to face. Um, but I think it's especially helpful for them just having something they can go back and reference and also being able to link things that are useful to them from there. Speaking of linking things, um, one of the things I found very helpful that I also posted on my little website that I made with uh, Wix.com, which is one of those many, many of those free websites you can make like Squarespace, places like that. Um, I just found Wix the easiest to work with, but um, I made a, well, I, I adapted something made by a couple other advisors, which is just like a step-by-step -step guide to the FAFSA. Um, you can see here, it includes screenshots of the old FSA ID creation page, and then just very, very detailed, um, you know, very uh, nitty gritty steps for each of the little things you need to do, what you need to have access to, to say, create an FSA ID or to complete this step or that step. So for some of those families I had who were like, you know what well, we did the FAFSA before, you know, five years, 10 years ago, whatever, we're a little familiar with it. Um, we just might, it not, might be nice to have something to reference or to check. I would send that their way and then be a, like more of a resource if they had any questions or if an issue came up. Um, but then of course, meeting one-on-one -on -one with those families, especially when they had a first generation student going to college, um, if they had just no familiarity with the FAFSA, kind of explaining what it is to them beforehand, because a lot of times I think it's either a term they've heard and they don't really know, you know, what does that mean? How complicated is it? Or it's something they've heard of and it's sort of, it sounds really daunting or they've never heard of it at all. Um, so just kind of breaking down from the beginning, like, okay, this is you putting in your tax information, putting in your income information to see how much you qualify for, really trying to kind of just break down. It's this basic equation, cost of attendance of a school, expected family contribution, but explaining that that's not how much you pay, this and that. Um, and then this is your financial need and that's how you get aid. Um, and just trying to make sure that's understandable and comprehensible and that I'm not just kind of, you know, throwing steps or explanations or this and that website at them without them knowing exactly what it is that they're doing, especially in cases where you have parents who, whether they're undocumented or they're just uncomfortable with, you know, putting their social security numbers and income information onto a website online, um, just making sure that everything is kind of, we get it all out on the table beforehand so everyone feels comfortable and there's like kind of that level of trust both in the process and then in the, me as the advisor as well. You know, as you were demystifying that process, because I've heard that from so many people, um, including, you know, uh, folks that are in my area, they have talked about, well, gosh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. What, are there other areas that you send them to other resources? What has been the most effective? Is it just been the materials that you've put together um, or is there a combination? I think a combination of different things. I think especially when it comes to issues with like 
um, Spanish-speaking parents or undocumented parents, CFNC Spanish Services Program have, has been really useful. Um, they have a lot of PDFs that are just both in English and in Spanish that you can reference, whether it's for parents only or whether it's for um, parents and students or whether just students, um, that really just breaks down like very cleanly what the FAFSA is, you know, what they're why this information is being requested, you know, some of those alternate steps if the parents don't have a social, like how you can get around that and the kid can still get aid. Um, so that's been really useful. And then also in some cases, connecting them to the Spanish service representatives at CFNC. Um, so that's been super helpful. A lot of your guys' social media kits last year, actually, I definitely used. I think I have an example of one of those later on um, for po a post about verification, because that wasn't something I felt as confident with at the time initially. Um, Oh man, just a bunch of, any, basically any website I can find, anything I can send to people, occasionally some of the Department of Ed stuff, although that can be a little bit uh, difficult to parse sometimes just because of the language used and because there's so much information. Um, yeah, and then I think just a, a lot of some of the different resources that the other advisors in my program have compiled over time. You know, there's sort of this big living Google Drive of resources that are always coming in. Um, and then also last year, leaning on the people who had already been there for a year, the other advisors, you know, I could always reach out to them just in our group chat with any kind of question or any kind of clarification on this or that issue. Um, so really just kind of reaching out to what is there, like trying to work smarter, not harder was definitely the name of the game. You know, you use what we've already got available. Um, and then if you don't have something, then you can make, then go ahead and make it yourself. Great, what's next? So next we've got, so this was a little bit more about when you're doing those virtual presentations. So I did quite a few of those, obviously, in 2020. Um, and even though engagement wasn't always as high as I might have liked it to be, so this was, I think, uh, well, four people, actually, because this was Miss Bullock from uh, Piedmont Community College. Uh, she was collaborating with me on this first FAFSA info night. Um, but it was still, so even though a lot of people couldn't make it at the actual time, because I was able to do a, uh, use Loom to screen record this entire presentation, um, I think like 20 more people what came and viewed it after that, um, which was really, really helpful. So I was still able to get that information out to everybody. Um, and I also sent out the link to the Loom recording because Loom kind of records things and then basically puts them on its website. And then you can send people the link to that recording. I sent them that through email. You know, I linked them to that through my Instagram. I put it on my newsletter in addition to all the resources that I referenced in here. So any like, you know, pictures or step-by-step -step guides or things like that. Um, so that's been one of the things that was really, that's been really useful both this year and last year is just making sure you use as many different mediums of communication as possible to reach out to people. Cause most of the time you're only gonna get people, you know, a certain person like through one or one or two things. You know, you might have one parent who they only ever text and you might have one student who they only ever, you know, talk to you on Instagram. And then you have some people who only ever send you emails. And so just being sure that you're getting it across all different mediums because you never know which one works for which people. Yeah, that's great. I know that on demand has been a really important piece and with the acceleration of some of these technologies, being able to um, recast that um, mm -hmm. recording has been really helpful. I always talk with people about give them the Netflix option. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people are moving away from the appointment TV, appointment webinars or events. So when people are ready to binge it, um, yeah. it's great that you've got resources like these for them. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I think just especially given all the schedule complications last year, you know, so many of my students were working essentially full time jobs. Um, even if it was at multiple different places and parents were working long hours and just with everything up in the air, I kind of, I not only always assumed that if I had an event, I would get low engagement, just record it, send it out later. But also whenever I had a meeting set up with someone, a virtual meeting of any kind, I just sort of assumed they would probably not show up on the first try because something would come up because it usually did. Um, so that just kind of helped keep that flexibility piece in place and keep me from getting too frustrated, you know, just be like, they're probably not going to make it first time around unless they've emailed me to say, hey, are we still meeting or whatever. So just kind of going in with that expectation. That's great. Yeah, and then so just a few more embedded links. So um, I used a couple different things. So I used um, the Loom screen recording tool again for the Ferrum College visit. That was this year, actually. Um, but then I've also used Zoom's um, cloud recording. So it posts it onto, I guess, a Zoom site, and then you can share the link to that recording out with people through Zoom. Um, so that's not all accessible, I think, to everyone's Zoom account. Um, I have it, uh, access to it through NC State's Zoom account, but anybody who has that university level access um, or is part of that university level or organizational level package should be able to do that as well. So I just have all these linked immediately. So these are the uh, individual 
presentations from different schools who participated in the virtual community college fair that um, me and the other advisor in Granville County and the advisors in Franklin County put together for our students. Oh, that's fantastic. So then um, kind of back to scheduling, I suppose. So I think the lifesaver for me has been Calendly. It's my, been my best friend this entire time. So it is just a little website. It can, it's like a browser extension. Um, you have this little scheduling page you can send out to people at, with a very simple URL. They can pick a date. They can pick a time that they want to join, uh, meet with you, whether virtually or not, put in their name, put in their email. And then I always have them put in just some kind of note about what it is they need help with or, you know, um, what they're planning on doing after high school. I've changed it up over time. So every now and then you'll get someone who will just type in NA and you don't know what to expect going in, but usually people put in something. So you have some idea of what we're going to be working on at this point. Um, and then this populates right into both my and my students' Google calendars because my students all have Google Relate connected accounts. Um, so I can really literally just post a Zoom link or a Google Meet link right into that event itself. So we all have access to it automatically. So it kind of saves us from having to do a whole bunch of emails back and forth which again, given that students just get so many emails as a rule, um, was a really, really helpful tool. So yeah, Cal Calendly has been the really just the best thing. Yeah, I know that that has been a lifesaver for me as well, but just really being able to have, you know, students and families feel yeah. empowered, they have some sense of control, um, but also some accessibility on your end and then making sure that you can also set boundaries. Um, yeah. That was a really important thing for me as well is just uh, I could really control, so to speak, when my blocks of time of availability were. Yep. Yeah. Nothing before 830. I get to work at eight. I get started. And then at 830, then you can start coming in. Um, but yeah, no, that, that was definitely an important piece of it. And I think the control aspect was important, too. You know, I wanted to be able to show that I was open to people whenever at whenever they needed me within you know obviously a reasonable time and a reasonable set of boundaries um so you know last year I would have week Saturday appointments available for certain hours Sunday for certain hours things like that after school appointments like trying to make sure that I was keeping myself as accessible as possible since I knew people's schedules were so out of whack I love that you are offering Saturdays and Sundays too so well, so yeah, that, that was one of those things. So again, just because of people's work schedules, or I think in general, I mean, if you have a working parent, I had many students who, you know, the only day they and their parent were both free was like a Sunday afternoon. So, you know, that's when we did the FAFSA. We just zoomed from my dining room and their dining room on a Sunday afternoon. And we went through and we did the students FAFSA. And there were tons of different cases like that. Or like, you know, maybe they wanted to, maybe they had a FAFSA issue. And then, you know, they emailed me on a Saturday afternoon. And I was like, okay, well, we got to get this figured out because we're coming up to crunch time or whatever, you know, just trying to, um, trying to make sure I was, you know, again, as available as I could be just given the chaos of the situation within a healthy, you know, level of boundary. Yeah. So in terms of outreach, one of the other tools that has, again, been my absolute best friend for the past two years has been Canva. Um, it's a free online, just little design platform. So you can do it for a lot more things than just social media, but I've essentially mostly used it for social media. So I've used it, um, I use it on my advising Instagram. I'll put together scholarships, um, put in some of the basic information about them, usually do like a little go link or a little like a bit.ly link type thing so that students can figure, you know, because you can't click on it straight from the Instagram post, but that way they just get some basic info about it. Um, you know, and I try to make it fun and keep the designs cute and interesting. And, you know, a lot of times the little, little college advising uh, Instagram community, we all kind of share things out uh, with each other as well. So that's also been really nice because you know that you're not just guess getting your students and your families, but you're also kind of reaching out to other uh, students and families at other schools in addition, just through the power of social media. Yeah, that's great. I've also used it, of course, for announcements. So we got that virtual community college fair again, and then raffles as well. So raffles have been a huge thing because you know, free, everybody loves free stuff. Teenagers love free stuff. Um, and then letting them know that they can get a cool free thing if they do this one kind of thing that they kind of know they need to do anyway. Um, it's a really great way to get some of that engagement up if that's something you've been struggling with at certain times of year. Um, so the only thing I kind of struggled with was prizes. I, this, I did better with this specific FAFSA completion raffle towards the end of last year, but I definitely struggled a bit early on because I had no idea what students would like. And students were in at such odd times, you know, on the hybrid schedule anyway. So if for organizations that allow it, this was really helpful to me. I, could, I realized I could just buy and give them with my work budget 
um, those Visa gift cards that are essentially just blank checks of like $20, $25, you know, however much you set them as. Because, you know, I didn't know what restaurants students had nearby, depending on where they live. So I didn't want to get them a Bojangles gift card if they didn't have a Bojangles nearby. Um, and then same deal with any other store they may or may not be interested in. You know, we're a decently rural community. We're within commuting distance of Durham, but for my students who live even further out in more rural areas, you know, again, they're not going to necessarily have a Starbucks nearby, right? So if I got them that sort of just blank check Visa gift card, you know, they could use it for their gas, they could use it for groceries, they could use it for whatever it is they needed to do, or use it for something fun, you know, whatever they preferred. So I found that really helpful. And that was again a gift that I, <laughs> I think my students really, uh, preferred those gifts over over anything else because you know I don't know how many kids actually well actually the kid who did get the nerf gun was very excited about it but there's always that one guy that's hilarious yeah and then um canva was also helpful just for kind of uh, kind of adapting information um into a new format so obviously you know just fafsa reminders but the fafsa verification stuff right here i think i actually got from one of your guys's social media kits um like you guys had just suggested the information to uh to mention to people that is usually most helpful. Um, and then Canva was helpful in, because it has all these templates you can use. And I just sort of plug that into, you know, the different templates and then you post it and then, you know, it's interesting and people share it out and it's really helpful. Oh, that's great. I love when people are able to take content that's already mm -hmm. pulled and then just localize whether it's yeah. style, look and feel um, for their community. So this is great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so this again, I don't know if this is just a CAC thing or if there are other versions of this out in the out in the internet. I would assume there might be other versions, but it's essentially a spreadsheet that allows you to analyze, um, well, analyze your award letter. You can plug in um, the cost of attendance at your school. You can plug in the different free aid you've gotten, and then you can essentially calculate your bill. There's also a section to put in um, whatever amount of loans you've been offered, and you can tweak it based on how much how, what amount of loans you want to be taking out. So you could put in just direct subsidized or half of direct subsidized or unsubsidized or whatever. Um, and it would tell you your estimate bill, estimated bill, um, your estimated net costs. And then the really helpful thing is it would give you an estimate of your approximate loan debt at graduation. And I actually found this super helpful because I think my students, when they, when they hear student loans, as many of us do, they think, you know, permanent endless debt. Um, but a lot of times for my students who were Pell eligible, you know, if they've already got that four to 6,000 in grant aid and they only have a little bit of loan aid they need to take out to cover cost of attendance so they don't have to pay anything out of pocket, they wouldn't be looking at much loan debt at all. They'd be looking in that very reasonable investment in your future um, type of student loan. So it was actually really helpful to them because they were able to see, oh, wait, this is what I would actually be paying month to month once I graduated and, you know, hopefully had a job in this or that. That's actually not scary or bad at all. You know, so in some cases, obviously in other cases, it was good. It was a good tool to say, don't take out all of this in loans because then you would have this, this, that, the other loan debt. Um, but it helped in kind of both directions, which I really appreciated about it. So, and then um, data equity was also a really big piece of everything we did. So this is grace, uh, getting results and achieving equity, I think something like that. I don't, no one really remembers what it stands for, but it is essentially the data platform that the College Advising Corps uses to keep track of all student interactions and student data. Um, and they have a really neat on the, just right on the dashboard, a filtering tool. So you can check, you know, how many one-on-one -on -one meetings have you had with students based on, you know, whatever different thing you want to break down. So for here, for instance, I can see I've met with 87% of my black students, but um, only 32% of their parents or guardians. And then for first generation college students, I've met with 95% of them, which I didn't even realize that's great. Um, but again, only 23% of parents. So family engagement this year, just given that things are a little more in person has not been quite as, it hasn't had that edge of like kind of desperation that it did last year. So trying to move to more in-person stuff and readjust to a more in-person year, it's been a little bit different. And then one of the things I think I'm most proud of is the scholarship spreadsheet that I made that I found really useful and I've shared out with some other advisors. So. I essentially just built up this huge Excel sheet. Um, I, I came up with color codes for different kinds of scholarships. So they were just very easy to identify for students. Um, I was also, I also specifically used a different font for scholarships that are specifically open to undocumented students. Um, I explained the navigation. And then, so if you move on, so an example of what it kind of looks like in practice is, so you can see like this one is light blue. That means it's open to LGBT students. And of course I indicate, you know, the name when it's due, how much money you would get from it whether or not it's renewable, because that's something I know students don't really think about a lot, basic requirements and the link. Um, and then you can also tell by the font, um, if you go back to 
the little index and the color coding explanation there, that this is also a scholarship specifically open to people of all citizenships. I try to include that in the requirements as well. Um, but sometimes if they get a little bit too wordy, it's easier just to have that basic, you know, okay, well, it's bold. So it's a, you know, high value scholarship type thing. Wow, this is great. Thank you. And then I think the other, so I, I kind of had to hunt around a bit and figure out what was the most useful type of newsletter to use. I tried, um, you know, some just basic PDF type things at first, but it was harder to embed links on there. But what I really liked about this, this is Adobe Spark. Um, it basically, even though I call it a newsletter, it's really just a permanent web page you make that's, you know, it's very simple and you just scroll right through it. But like, you, as you can see, I embedded links to, you know, my email, um, my Calendly page, my website, the scholarship spreadsheet, all these different things. So you can always go back and reference it anytime you want. As long as you have that link, you know, you don't need to have an, any kind of attachment sent out or anything. So I'd always include all the ways people can contact me because again, you know, as many mediums as possible. And then I'll often include, you know, events we have coming up. So this is from this year, um, the FAFSA info night that we had recently. Uh, it included the registration link, the location, time, um, you know, and just other indicate other events that are happening in the community. So the trio at Piedmont Community College, they were doing free virtual uh, test prep nights. And then again, from this year, this is from my October newsletter, um, you know, just basic information about the FAFSA and how, why it's important, kind of trying to really highlight, in, you know, in bold or italics, like the actual important information so that people don't just sort of skim through and miss it. Um, and then also free college application week links to useful information about that. And you can embed images as well. So I put in the list of all the different schools participating um, because that way students, you know, if they saw a school they were interested in might actually, you know, go back and read more about it and get interested in the whole process. I think that is actually all of my slides. Oh, that is so helpful. So I'm curious. So I know last year, right, there were a lot mm -hmm. of folks that said, uh, just engagement, like people are no longer reading emails and all the traditional ways in which we're reaching. What have you found the bridge between, you know, class of 20, um, 11, gosh, where am I? Class of 2021, <laughs> class of 2022. Are there differences now that you're seeing? Yeah, I've definitely noticed a lot less social media engagement. Um, and I don't know if that's just because, you know, if you're in school, you're supposedly not on your phone quite as much. Um, I, um, and I've, there's probably more email engagement, I would say, but it's also hard to tell because the students who were engaged with my emails last year, the higher achieving students are the same ones, you know, qual like qualitatively speaking this year. Um, it's also been nice though, just to be able to pull students out of class. That's not really an option in a Zoom class. Um, so there's definitely been a lot more, I think, relationship level, uh, it, it feels more like a genuine relationship, the advising sessions with my students now, you know, just because it's not that we're on such a time crunch that, you know, oh, well, you have to go to work in a half hour. So let's just, you know, bang out this form or whatever. There's actually time to sort of slow down and get to know each other as people a little bit more. Um, and I think it's a lot more effective in the long run. So that's been really nice. Um, bridge between the two. Sorry, I'm kind of blanking. Um, <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate all of these great resources. And if you don't mind, I'd love to be able to share out the link to the slides that you had shared yeah. today in case anyone wants to go back and review them. Um, and then I know that Kira, for everybody else out there that's listening, um, she mentioned resources. If you go out to ncfirstinfafsa.com, uh, my future NC has been really kind of um, aggregating a whole bunch of resources from folks, including our College Advising Corps, to some folks with Gear Up and Trio and um, all over the place, and CFNC certainly, um, which you mentioned, um, just so that anybody that is new um, in their role in counseling or advising, um, there are a whole host of different resources available to you that you can use at face value or localize to whatever your local community needs. So um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And thank you, Kira, and congratulations. Thank you very much.